Hey guys, this is Rahul here, working for one of the IT firms and there are 10 years of experience, 3 plus years of experience in Tableau but frankly 6 plus months uh, of experience and hands-on experience basically on Tableau. The rest I did some designing and architecture planning for Tableau. So overall 6, six plus months of experience, hands-on experience and then this month on 8th August I gave my Tableau Desktop 10 Qualified Associate Certification. So got decent marks of 91% uh, and this video is basically to help you guys to basically crack this certification and um, put that in your resume. So I would say normally people tell that 5 months, 6 months of hands on experience will help. But I think uh, three months, three and a half months would suffice to clear this exam uh, with uh, the questions which I'll help you. The questions, type of questions which uh, they ask, I will let you know some of the, the questions which I actually know or and which I actually recall after the exam. So hope that this video will help you and help you to crack this exam. So, first of all, I will say, so we'll start step by step, right? So, we'll go to data source page. So, what are questions we get on data source page? I will let you know. So, if you see here, definitely we'll get some questions on metadata manager. So, you should aware of this window, what all things it is showing. We can do rename or not, all those things we should aware of and the next question you may get on data joining so how to join and what all type of joins are there and data blending uh, so in data blending also we'll get good amount of questions in uh, and i will say that this sample superstore data we should aware of this data set what all columns we have and what type of data we have because I will say around 40-45% or more than that questions will come from this data set. So if we are aware of this data set then it's better that we will not have to spend much time on understanding the data and solving it. We are already aware of the data and we have to uh, solve the problem. Now you may get you may get some questions on orders and returns join right. So let's see what type of join we will have to put between order and return. So I will not uh, I will not help you to solve that uh, try from your side and if you have any questions then we will connect uh, some questions on extract like out of blending out of uh, cross joining database joining and union in which method we cannot create extract right so that is one more question i will not give you the answer but uh, try from your side and let me know if you are not able to solve that so these are some questions that are blending, that are joining and metadata manager, extracts, what type of database will not create extract, all those questions may ask, may be asked. Apart from that, sets is very important topic. We have to cover sets. So if you see here, I have a set of customer name by profit. Suppose I create one more set by I will say top 10 customer by sales and make it OK. So it will give you an option of create combined sets. So you can create combined sets between these two sets. So here the question may ask like create a set of top 10 customers with highest sales, create a set of top 10 customers by highest profit and create a combined set with all the shared members and then we have to find what else, how many shared members we had out of these two sets. So these type of questions you may get. You have to create a set by top 10 by profit, top 10 by sales and you have to find bottom 5. They will give you uh, 5 names and ask you which customer lies in bottom 5. right? So all those questions you can expect very well. And after that, there are some questions on trend line. If you see here, 
if I'll create a scatter plot and create uh, something like this and you will get a trend line right so this is a trend line so they can ask you what will be the profit value when I'll spend one dollar in my sales right or if I'll get one dollar of sales so the answer will be around 0.18 into 1 plus minus 12 so it will be around negative right so, so all those things the value of r squared so they can ask you to compare the value of r, r squared on different models logarithmic if you see in logarithmic the value is 0 0.04 if you see here for linear it is 0.22 and if you see in exponential it is 0 0.30 and if you see polynomial with degree 3 so you can see it's 0.34 so 0.34 is more so more the r squared value more the good model is so they can ask you like which model is actually give me better performance or better output so this will be the answer uh, model with polynomial uh, degree 3 so this type of questions definitely will come by sales questions you will get how many uh, the, the question which I told you, right? Uh, what will be the profit value when I spend, when I, when I get one dollar of sales, right? So those type of questions you can definitely get. Next questions, next type of question will be the forecasting. If you see here, let me make it a sum. We'll make it eight marks and or a date. I'll remove this trend line. I don't want this, so I'll remove this and by a month and then i go and do a forecasting right so this is the forecasting value so it can they can ask you like what will be the forecast value for which month and so on so if you see here I, in the month of november the forecast value is 108330 so this type of questions you may get forecasting is very much important uh, you can see in forecast option so they can ask you for how many years exactly one year and so on this can option will be very much possibly will have to use these options now apart from forecasting next questions you will get is on the moving average which is again very much important topic if you see order date and if i'll make it something like this and remove this forecasting first i don't want forecast now and if i go to quick table calculations and moving average i have moving average this and the question you will get something like if i'll select here so select previous six months and next six months and tell me the average of tell me the average of maybe june 2016 so the value is 52000 something right so this type of question you will get they can ask you not six then maybe current month and six months previous right so the value will be something here right june 2016 so 43000 dollars something like that so this moving average questions will definitely come and they can also ask you about uh, the analytics pane so what all things can be done using analytics pane so we can create box plot we can create median average line constant line totals we can do trend lines forecast clustering reference lines so they can ask you like what all things can be done using analytics pane so there will be one option uh, which can be done and there are three options which cannot be done like calculated field or something so we have to select maybe forecast is there so we can do forecasting from analytics pane all those things we have to cover we may get that uh, if you go here i'll put sales by uh, for example subcategory and make it as text and they can ask you and i will put category as well and they can ask you to put the subtotal of each category so again we have to go to totals and put in something like this so you'll get the subcategory right so you have to create something like this and uh, showcase okay this is the value and then they can ask you some question okay 
what will be the grand total of this particular uh, category and so basically it's all that so all those things can be done all those things uh, they will ask and after that i will say um, creating hierarchy right so they can ask you to create some higher random hierarchy uh, like i want a hierarchy on segment customer name so i just have to drop here uh, something like this so this is already created maybe segment and so this is by default hierarchy created but uh, let me remove hierarchy and they can ask you create a hierarchy on region and subcategory and then by manufacturer right so this is a hierarchy which we have created so i'm just giving you the type of questions you will get so now the hierarchy on region subcategory and manufacturer is there now they can ask you that for logitech or uh, for central region for this particular subcategory for this particular manufacturer uh, which region actually or in which region we have more sales of subcategory and manufacturer so all those things can be asked so we have we should have good hands-on experience on the subcategories of uh, creating hierarchies as well and some questions on dashboarding right so if you see here in dashboard they can ask you for actions so in actions if we they can ask you like with what all options we can run action like hover select menu and there will be some option so we will have a checkbox so we can click this and say okay this these three options basically help me to uh, play around with the uh, dashboard in actions also they can ask you to create a user filter suppose i have i have two sheets and maybe region by sales and i'll put this sheet here and put this sheet here and they can ask you in dashboard like using this users filter what will be the value here so if i'll select here so this value so 268 will be the output so something like that using uh, action filter we have to uh, use us filter as, use this sheet as a filter and give me the output of something so there will be four or five charts in the dashboard you have to suppose there is a sheet one sheet two sheet three and sheet four in the dashboard they can ask you to using sheet two tell me the output of sheet four okay so you have to use uh, sheet two as a filter and you have to tell the output of sheet four so that type of question you can definitely get you may have to ask create a box plot on various things so if you see here we have box plot so they can ask you in which region we can see more uh, range uh, so you can what you have to do is just have to over here and we have lower hinge minus upper hinge we have to manage that and uh, basically tell okay, uh, tell that in central region or in east region yeah, in east region we have more hinge so that will be the answer so all those questions we have to or all those hands-on practice we have to definitely do so i will definitely recommend you to do uh, all those things one more thing is as this is tableau 10 certification they will ask you what all new features we have in tableau 10 so uh, custom uh, geocoding highlighting all those concepts you should aware of so that is one of the things so with this i think most of the questions are covered with this so with the topics which i already told you so that will help you to clear the exam and uh, you should aware of all those uh, concepts because in exam you have to be thorough thorough about which option you have to select and which option you have to uh, use so to give the answer if you see there are certain modules data connection, organizing and simplifying data, field and chart types, calculations, uh, mappings, analytics and dashboards. So all those things we have to aware of. And at the same time, I will say don't panic during the exam because uh, you have two hours and we have to solve 36 questions. We have a lot of time. 
if you divide 36 by 2 hours it's around three and a half minutes so three and a half minutes for one question is very much easy you just have to concentrate you don't have to panic some question if you are not able to answer just leave that move ahead solve all the easy questions and come back to those questions that is what my suggestion will be and at the same time two hours utilize that and i i completed my exam in one hour with uh, 91 percent of marks so i would say just uh, play safe here we don't have to show to tableau in the certification that we know all those charts and different uh, fancy things we have to just give answer and that can be done using text box text numbers text tables or any simple calculation we definitely not require lod's and other tough calculations at all simple calculation will give you answer go for it i don't recommend you to go with the tough questions uh, tough uh, calculations and solve the problem so that is what i want to highlight and if you see any challenges just get back to me uh, my email id is headstay at gmail.com so you can email me anytime and i will definitely help you to solve your problems thank you very much and hope you like this video thanks a lot